Yo, 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 this is Dorky Diggity Dave, and today we're talking about a nice blend of Havoc and the Wasp, getting 50% attack added to the base attack, and we're gonna see how making this match comes together and makes the perfect fire. Let's check out this episode of Welcome back guys to another Synergy Samba. Today we're talking about this Wasp and Havoc Synergy where Wasp gains 50% of her base attack for 3 seconds while she's doing her heavy attack during that basic attack combo. Now you can see my combo right here, 1, 2, 3, heavy attack, and I get that fury buff for 3 seconds, which essentially makes a stronger heavy attack. But there's so much more that you can do with this. Check it out. So first things first, we're talking about our team. So we do have that Havoc and the Wasp synergy, but there's also the other players on the team. Now, this isn't really as important for what we're doing here, but I'll list them anyway. We have a synergy that gives 25% attack if you have Ant-Man, Ghost, and Wasp on the same team, plus adding in a 6% increase in attack for both Ant-Man and for Yellow Jacket all together. So that's just some extra added damage, but for these examples, I'm just going to be using Havoc and Wasp with some random champions in to build a more realistic team. So here we are just going in with a regular combo right into SP1, just so that we have something to compare with. Now in this example, we're gonna go in with the same combo, except we're gonna have that heavy into the combo to get that fury, and then interrupt with an SP1, and you're gonna see there is a pretty significant amount of damage done, as opposed to doing it without the fury buff. So a couple things going on here. One is the heavy attack that you combo in with your basics that will stun the opponent for 0.60 seconds, but also when shrinking down, Wasp gains the ability to get two guaranteed critical hits on top of getting an attack rating boost for each debuff that's active on the opponent at the time. So going in and taking a second look at this, we're going in again with that combo and interrupting that heavy attack with the SP1. You can now see where that damage is coming from, not only from the Fury, but from the fact that she shrunk down first before doing the SP1. So that first hit of the SP1 is now sharing in the benefit of the two guaranteed critical hits and the debuff attack damage bonus. So to put it simply, the first hit of your SP1 is going to be a guaranteed critical, while the other two are happening after she shrinks down in the animation, and those are going to be critical as well. So basically a full crit SP1, powered by a 50% base attack fury buff, guaranteed every time. Now the SP2 is a little bit different, because if we use the same strategy that we use for the SP1, we basically run out of time. Take a look at that fury buff, and it's literally going to run out of time by the time the last three hits are coming in at the end, and we want to try to mitigate that. And that's where the fun part comes in, at least for me. So what I've done here is I've done my full combo, and when I go into the heavy attack, I'm immediately canceling right into the SP2 so that I get the fury buff, and I get the two crit bonus. Let's take a closer look at her SP2 so you can see exactly why this is important. So her SP2 has the first hit, bam, that is a non-shrink hit. You have the second hit, which she's shrunk. So she's gonna get the critical damage there. And then she comes out of shrink, gets her second critical, bam, and then the other two hits. So when interrupting that heavy attack to go in, again, you're guaranteeing the first two hits to be critical. She comes out of the shrink, gets another guaranteed critical attack all while under that 50% attack base boost from that Fury buff. So as you can see here, we've got the comparison down. We have that guaranteed crit, which already makes the difference, and we have a pretty huge difference in the damage. Now, you can see on the tail end, they were both 1660 at the end of that because the Fury buff had already expired by the time the last hit came in, so therefore they had the same damage. 
Now the timing is a little bit challenging, but so rewarding, so check it out. I'm gonna show you exactly how to time it. Rule number one, no mashing. So I have a dash, a tap, a tap, a tap, quickly followed by a hold. And I lit off as soon as it shows me that I've gotten the heavy attack in. So one more time, we're gonna get the parry, going with the dash, tap, 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 and then tap and hold, get that in and let go, and we are golden. Now here's an example with launching the SP2. So I'm doing the same examples here. I'm gonna do that double tap and hold and launch the SP2 immediately. She's not even getting into shrink and just going right into the SP2. I gotta tell you, it's a lot of fun to do this and to see how many times you can get this down in a row if you're looking for something new to do in the game in case you've gotten bored. So thanks for watching this episode of Synergy Samba where we have Havoc and Wasp coming together and making such a sexy fire. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought. Did you know about this? Did you know that Wasp had that potential? Did you ever think about interrupting those heavies to do those special attacks while having Havoc on the team? Let me know down below. And if you liked the video, and I hope that you did, go ahead and click subscribe, click like, leave a comment, share it with your friends, share it with your mama. All that stuff helps me out. And remember, stay dorky, and I'll catch you on the flip. Oh, Potamus! Tú puedes bailar hasta la victoria